Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a nice piece of 7000 series plug-in. Uh, this is a rather interesting one. This is a 7A29 option 4. So this is the fastest plug-in that Tech ever made. They never made a dual channel version of this for the 7000 series scope. It has a similar sibling plug-in, the 7A19, the main difference between the two being bandwidth. So the 7A29, both of them, option 4 and non-option 4, can go up to 1 gigahertz of vertical bandwidth. The 7A19 can only go up to 500 megahertz. Both of them are 50 ohm plugins, so all of the typical 50 ohm stuff applies. Tech did actually, I, I found, um, I have to get some for some of the higher bandwidth plugins, but I do believe Tech made some 50 ohm probes to go with these. Um, and I'd love to pick up a couple of those for the lab. The other thing is, you'll also note, here's a 200 megahertz plug-in right here. Need to fix the button. But on a 200 megahertz plug-in, really can't see it because of the camera, but we go up to 5 volts of division, and we go down to 5 millivolts per division. On the high-speed plug-ins, we're from 1 to, we're at 10 millivolts to 1 to one volt. So they are slightly voltage limited. Now that does tend to happen in scopes when things get fast. A uh, perfect example is some of the fastest stuff that I have in the lab. I have a couple of these which I'm going to try to repair in some other videos. But these are also 50 ohm inputs, but plus minus 3 volts max for damage. So these are very fast plugins. The um, SD26s, I believe, are 12 gigahertz. Is it 12 or 26? 20 gigahertz. Ah, I was way off. So the SD26 is a 20 gigahertz plug-in, and it only goes to 3 volts. This is also true on quite modern gear. Um, uh, I know Dave from the EV blog. He has a, uh, I think it's a three hundred thousand dollar. No, that's not it. There's a, he has a picosecond scope, but it's it's only voltage limited to like five volts on the input. That's all you get. So even when money is no object, uh, this is physics limitations of the semiconductors. So now the option four units. The typical complement for a 7,000 series frame would be these would go in a 4-bay, and they would um, it would go with a non-option 4, and then you'd have an option 4. The option 4 is this variable delay range. In this case, we can vary it 500 picoseconds, plus or minus. And what that does is it lets you phase match the channels. When doing um, high-speed timing, you can uh, you have the um, non-option four unit that um, oh no sorry it's it's 0.5 nanoseconds so it's yeah it is picoseconds getting lost in the units so you'd have a non-option four and then you'd have an option four and that lets you timing match the channels so you can do correlated measurements between the two um, on this particular one. Some things to note, if you ever do get a, hand, um, get a 7A29 of either type, if this knob is jammed, do not force this control. If you force this control, it can just shatter the unit, and then it can, it can make the attenuator just completely toast. So very important um, not to force this control, and I'll get into that when we take a look at the inside. The other thing is the input protection on the 7A19, uh, 7A29 is a little bit better than the 7A19. The 7A19 has two fuses in it to protect the input from overload um, and they are very hard to replace and very hard to source if they are needed 
fortunately, both of my 7A19 units function, so that's not a problem. I was really actually looking for a um, 7A19 unit, but it turns out this unit and the 7A19 unit came with, the, um, with a batch of plugins that I found. So I can't actually calibrate this in the lab. To do a full alignment and calibration on this, I would need a 7104A, or a 7104, which is the 1 gigahertz frame. I only have a 7904, which is the 500 megahertz frame. So I'm going to kind of check it in, test it, do some things like that, but I'm not going to do an alignment if, unless it's way off. I mean, I can align gain and things like that, but the high frequency compensation, I don't really want to mess with that because there's... Um, I don't have it. Uh, I'll be losing half of its bandwidth using the 7904, so that would cause some problems down the road. Uh, we'll start on this side of the plugin. So we have some incredibly high frequency stuff going on here. Eh, not incredibly high, but high for the time. This is the variable delay line, as controlled by. Um, that control in the front, and then the attenuator is where, so that's pretty much all that is over here on this side. Over here, we have the attenuator and the AC-DC coupling, and then we also have some of the ceramic hybrids that uh, are found all over the um, 7904 and the 7104 scopes. So same ceramic hybrids, same elastomer technology, uh, same considerations when moving these around. I did end up having to take a couple of these off when I did the DSA 602 um, repair because I had to pull a board out. These are quite interesting to service. So the best thing is if you don't have to take these apart, don't. <laughs> um, because getting them lined up again, sitting them in, getting getting a good connection, because the, uh, the connection is actually made by the frame to the board, so the chip kind of sits in a hole. Then there's a bridge elastomer in this frame that clamps the chip down and connects to the circuit board at the same time. So it can be entertaining. And actually, you can see the differential signaling. Here's some of it right here. Let's see. Can we tell where the differential leaves? the scope maybe not but yeah so it co it comes in here and then as soon as it hits this i see it's differential all the way through so it yeah so here's this is so signal signal comes out here comes into this hybrid into this high single ended because of the coax into this hybrid differential out of this hybrid here's starting the differential signaling coming through differential up to the top and then here's where the differential pops out so the differential signal is coming over this way like so and then it pops out over here now the other thing is when tech made these they made a fixed gain amplifier because it's a lot easier to make a um to make a high bandwidth amplifier it's not easy to make a high bandwidth amplifier that doesn't scream all over the place but it is easier to make a high, high bandwidth amplifier that is uh, fixed gain as opposed to variable gain. So what they do is they know the gain function of the amplifier. They attenuate the signal coming in, so then they have a fixed gain, and that's how they get measurement out of the out of the out of the plug-in. Is because I know how much I've cut the signal at the front end based on the uh, setting of the control, but I also know how much my gain is coming out the backside. So that's how I can get calibrated measurement. The Signal comes out of the attenuator here, so this is actually, so this is the attenuation block. We'll get into that in a little bit because this is why that front control jams. So we come out of here, down here to the first hybrid, come out of the first hybrid, still single-ended, into the second hybrid, come out of the second hybrid differential, so the differential signaling starts here. There's a... Uh, I wonder if that's supply voltage there. It might be, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure. So we have differential, comes into this amplifier differential, comes out of this amplifier differential, out of it goes into this hybrid differential, and then comes out 
right here. Here's where our differential signal leaves the amplification chain and then goes into the frame to be displayed on, goes through the amplification chain of the scope to be displayed on the CRT. So I do not know how well the camera's picking this up. This doesn't look like it. It's, it's checking a little bit. However, there's these tiny roller cams in here. When I adjust the attenuator in the front, those cams move the attenuator plungers up and down. And um, they run on little plastic tabs and what happens is those little plastic tabs shatter. If it's if it's jammed and you force the control, those plastic tabs shatter, and then you have to rebuild this attenuator assembly, which would be almost impossible at this at this time uh, in 2022 because it's just the the parts are unavailable. So it would pretty much destroy the plug-in. Okay, here's a close-up of the coupling switch. Right here are the little plastic tabs that actuate the plungers and the attenuators. Same thing too on the range coupling switch. So that's what you don't want to have crack off the front end or crack off the um, control because it'll wreck the, um, wreck the plug in. So for now we have a little bit of switch damage up here. Looks like this has been glued a few times. So we'll pop that off and we'll take this off position off. Because we will replace this. Because even though I uh, can only get 500 megahertz out of this, would be nice to use in the lab if it works. Because uh, the attenuator's all in good shape. Everything's actuating like it's supposed to. So, there we go. Is that enough? Nope. Okay, well, the shaft is a little bent. So we'll have to bend that back. It's just a steel steel shaft, which is fine. Um, I don't know if the camera... Oh, yeah. camera's picking up the lean a little bit. So that's... At least in terms of the camera, that's straight. That looks a lot better already now that it's not bent and we have a uncracked knob. So the next thing to do um, is to get out the uh, frame, get all get some of the gear warmed up, and we'll check the gain. If we do have to adjust the gain, that's fine. Um, it won't be a big deal. But yeah, we'll just give it a test, see if, see if everything works, and go from there. Well, it seems our gain has drifted a little bit. I have the calibrator hooked up, and because this is a 50 ohm input, we need to divide the calibrator by two. So I have it set to 100 millivolts per division, one volt on the calibrator, which gives me a attenuation factor of uh, divide by two, so this is 500 millivolts. Now, the problem is this waveform looks, looks pretty good. However, uh, I have the variable out, and it is saying it's 3.5% uh, high, so if I turn the variable in, that's what it's really reading, so we are a little off. But that is a simple matter of is a simple matter of tweaking this control right here. In which case now we are 1.2% off. So let's check the other attenuators so there's that this should be four divisions that's actually better that's 0.4 percent so not bad go up one a 
And let's see where we're at here. And we'll call that in spec. So that's 2.2. We're going after a three volt. Um, 3% is the target and that's 2%. So the attenuator is actually in really good shape. We'll crank this down a bit. Crank this down a bit more. Check the lower side. percent uh, that's actually dead on the uh, 10 millivolts and that is pretty much dead on as well there's some fuzzing out in the um, in the signal. That's because it's a high bandwidth amplifier. The lower the bandwidth, the cleaner it looks. The higher the bandwidth, the fuzzier it gets because it's picking up more noise from the ambient. So from a volts per division standpoint, we look pretty good. What does our edge speeds look like? Oh, this looks fun. So this looks awful, but it's really not. So let's wind up uh, actually let me use the external trigger on this one that's usually more reliable because this edge is so fast. Well, that was a tough one to get to trigger. <clears throat> so here's the step response of the waveform on this uh, 7A29. So it doesn't look half bad. This is with no adjustment, too. This is how it's shipped. So I am good with that. Getting this thing to trigger was quite a challenge. Um, the waveform on this uh, 284 is kind of funny. It doesn't like... Um, because of this first step when the tunnel diode starts doing its thing. Turn this down, that's super sensitive to the screen. When the tunnel diode starts doing its thing before it does the quick rise, it um, it's real hard to get this to trigger. And you can see the waveform is not 100% clean either. As, you, as it slows down, it kind of ramps up. This high frequency waveform is only good for the beginning. What is it? Like 20 nanoseconds of the waveform for getting it, uh, for doing an alignment. So, because other than that, you lose the flatness. So this is only for the, hot, for the uh, very quick rising edge. I do want to calibrate this unit, not the 7A24, but the 284, in a future video. I will be doing that. We have an uh, extremely fast scope in the lab for doing that. I need to work on 70 picosecond edges. So that will be coming here in the future. Here's the wave shape on a 1 gigahertz scope. So this is what it looks like. So it's nice and flat after the peak. I actually have it dialed way back. This is going to take a while to build since I moved it because I have a bunch of sampling turned on. But it comes up and it flattens out real quick. One thing I didn't notice is I talked about the jamming of the um, attenuator on this plug-in. It needs lubrication. That's its bigger. That's its biggest problem. Is if they're seized up like that, they need to be broke. They need to be moved in gently and then lubricated correctly to uh, bring them back to functioning. All right, so there we go. Uh, just a little look at the uh, 7A29 and a little bit of background on some of these 7K plugins. This is about as tested as I can make this one until I either, well, I don't know if I'm ever going to get a 7104, but this is about as tested as I can make this one. But it's working just fine, so we can use it in, actually we can use it in all the frames, but it would be a waste 
to use it in anything other than a 7904 and a 7854 because putting this in just like a 7603 which is a 100 megahertz frame would kind of be silly so with that i will see everybody in the comments and in the next video